Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to smoke brisket in an offset smoker step by step. So we'll get started by getting some coals going. So we've just got two fire lighters here. We're gonna light these up. And then we have got a full chimney worth of briquettes. We wanna get these nice and red hot. And that's what we're gonna to use to start our fire with. All right, so for the brisket, we've got this beautiful black onyx brisket. It's about seven kilos. Pick this up from Austral Meats. So now we'll open it up, get started on the trimming. All right, so we'll start with the underside. We're just gonna get rid of any silver skin or hard fat. And don't throw away your brisket trimmings if you've got a, a mincer or something. Makes perfect burgers. There's always a big hard chunk of fat in here, you always want to scoop that out. All right, I'm pretty happy with the bottom there. So we'll go flip it over to the top. We don't want to trim all this top fat off, we just want to trim it down until it's about two to three mil thick. You can trim a little bit heavier on the point if you want. There's a lot more intramuscular fat on the point. I like to leave a little bit more fat on the flat side just because it is a leaner side of the brisket. All right, now we've trimmed it up, it's time to season. We're gonna go with the grilled, the smoked, and the lovely by Heavenly Hell. You pick your favorite beef rub. This is one of our favorites. So we'll go ahead and give it a nice, even coating on both sides. We'll start on the bottom. Try and get the sides as well. Flip her over and do the top. <clears throat> right, now that can sit until our fire's ready. Let's have a check on them briquettes and get our fire going if they're ready. All right, so the majority of these are ashed over. I'm happy to get these in our charcoal basket and the rest will ash over in a matter of minutes. So we'll pop our charcoal basket in and then we'll pour our briquettes in. Then we can add a couple of nice little wood splits. Really want to get a nice fire going. So we'll leave this firebox door open until these log splits are starting to burn nicely. Then we'll close it up, leave our side door open. We've opened up our top vent completely on our chimney. And then once I'm happy with these logs, we'll start getting into a bit of fire management in the offset. So I've got a couple of drip trays there. Obviously our brisket will sit up on the cooking grate and any rendered fat will drip down into them drip trays and we might even use some of that rendered fat later on. All right, so our fire's settled down. We've got a nice coal base to work with now. As you can see, our probe on the cooking grate is showing around 275 Fahrenheit or 135 Celsius, while our temperature gauge on the top of the lid is showing well above that. That's why it's not good to go by the temperature gauge Always try and put a cooking grate temperature probe in. That'll give you a much more accurate reading until you really get to understand your smoker. Once you get to know your smoker well enough, you can pretty much do without the temperature probes. You can feel the heat, you know exactly what it's doing. You know if the temperature gauge on the lid reads X amount, it's actually uh, X level. So while we've got a clean burning stable fire, we'll get our brisket on. We've got our log preheating here. So that's gonna be good to go. That's gonna catch fire almost instantly as soon as we put it on the fire. You don't wanna be putting a cold log on the fire. That's just gonna smother your fire and potentially cause dirty smoke, which we do not want. So let's get this brisket on. All right, so we're gonna to aim to smoke this brisket at around the 250 to 275 Fahrenheit or 120 to 135 Celsius range. Now, what we're gonna do with our smoker, every time it starts dipping around that 250 Fahrenheit or 120 Celsius and below, we're gonna check our fire. I'm assuming we're gonna to have to put a log in as usual every 45 minutes to an hour or so. 
Every time we put a log in, we're gonna put another fresh one on top. We're only gonna be using one split at a time. That's gonna be plenty of fuel to keep our fire going for that 45 minutes to an hour. If you were to put two or three logs on, that's gonna be way too much fuel. You're either gonna smother your fire or your temperature's gonna be way out of control. So nice little wood splits like this are the perfect size. Anything bigger than that, it's gonna cause a massive fire and you're gonna have a massive temperature spike. So. Nice, steady, small fire, clean burning smoke is gonna be our aim for today. You don't want that dirty smoke, which is gonna be caused by putting too much fuel in there, cold logs, or just unseasoned wood. So make sure you get some quality wood. We've got some nice iron bark wood splits from Natural Smoke. And the other thing is don't panic when you do put a log on. You will get a small temperature fluctuation, but don't panic. We're gonna leave our chimney stack vent wide open and we're just gonna control our temps with our firebox vents. So if we wanna increase temp, we're either gonna open that side vent right up or open our firebox door completely. If we wanna decrease, we're just gonna shut down in very small increments because if you shut down all your vents too quick, you're gonna kill your fire and cause dirty smoke as well. So that's gonna be our keys for today. We'll keep this brisket cooking, we'll keep our firebox nice and stable, and we'll come back a little bit later on when we're ready to go to the next stage for the brisket. So I've just put a fresh log on and it's caught fire almost instantly. That's exactly what you want. We haven't smothered our fire, so we'll close that lid up. That's where I've got my vent set at the moment. Like I said, if it gets too out of control, we'll shut it down slightly, or if it starts smothering, we'll open it up and potentially the firebox door. And now that logs on, time to preheat our next one. So we've put our point end facing the firebox. As it's thicker, there's much more fat in there so it can absorb that heat much better. If we do find that the point end starts cooking faster than the flat, we'll just rotate it around, but I always like to start by putting the point end towards the firebox as it is thicker. The key to this brisket is you want both sides of the brisket cooking as even as possible. So like I said, if we do find later on that the point end's cooking faster than the flat, we'll rotate the brisket around, and if we need to rotate it back later in the cook, we'll do that. So we'll let this thing go for a while and come back. So this is exactly what you want. We're about an hour and a half in. We've just had our second log for the actual cook go on. As you can see, or can't see, any thick smoke coming out. It's exactly what you want. Right around that temperature we want it to be at. So just for reference, that's 278 there. And we're nearly at 450 there, or 225-ish Celsius. Got a beautiful little fire going. Let's see, we've got our vent at the moment. Running really steady, got our next log preheating. Like I said before, when that starts getting below that 250 Fahrenheit or 120 Celsius range, we'll get our next log in there. So we'll have a quick look in the firebox just so you can see how it's burning. So that's a beautiful, clean burning fire. Right, so we've got our smoker set up at about 6.30 this morning. We've got our brisket on at about 7.30. It's now just after 11.30, so we're just over four hours in. Let's have a look at the brisket and check our internals. Still been holding beautiful around our target temperature. A beautiful, clear smoke rolling. Oh man, this thing is looking incredible. Fifty-three, one sixty-five, one seventy, one fifty-eight. All right, I reckon we're ready for the next step. Right, so some of our past brisket videos, we've wrapped the brisket in foil and we've tried no wrap and we've also done butcher's paper. This time we're gonna boat it. So let's get the brisket out and set up in the boat. All right, so get some foil out. Beautiful brisket out. And we're just gonna fold all the edges up of the foil and make a boat. All right, just like that you want it. And then what we're gonna do now is uh, rendered beef fat in them trays down below. We're gonna pour it over the top of our brisket and that's just gonna seep all back in through and underneath it. get the brisket back in. All right, so by boating our brisket, we get to preserve all of that beautiful bark we've worked so hard to get. 
And by adding that rendered beef fat, that's gonna help us keep a lot of moisture in there too, and a bit more flavor. So we're just gonna treat this as if we normally would now. We're just gonna take it until it's probe tender around that 205 Fahrenheit or 96 degrees Celsius mark. Might take another four hours, might take six. We're gonna use internal temperature as one point of reference, but we're mainly gonna be going by probe tenderness. So we'll keep our smoker running and we'll come back a bit later on. All right, we are just over the seven hour mark into this cook. I had a probe around about half an hour ago and it was actually pretty close. So let's have another check. Ooh, look at that. Look at all this extra rendered beef fat that's come out. We're not gonna waste that. We'll show you what we'll do with it a bit later on. Oh, this is probing like butter. Actually probing really well, even though it was 192 there, but that is just probing super soft. Still got a little bit of a way to go down here. You wanna make sure you check your brisket all over. You want it to be probing nice all over, but you also don't wanna overcook some parts too. So if you do have a colder part of your smoker and you know where your hot spots are, obviously put wherever's behind into your hot spot and wherever is a little bit further into the cooler sort of spots if you can position it that way. That is not far off at all. I reckon another 20 minutes, half an hour, and we'll be getting this thing out. All right, so this brisket is probing beautifully all over now. So I'll show you what we're gonna do next to get it out. All right, because I don't wanna lose any of that rendered beef fat, that tray underneath, I'm basically gonna let the juice out, let it drop into the tray underneath, and then we'll get the brisket out without spilling any of that juice because it'll all be in that bottom tray. All right, so what we're gonna do now is take the brisket inside. I'm just gonna let it rest for an hour before we slice and serve it because I wanna serve it in an hour. If you had your brisket done early by five or six hours, you can always get it out, let it rest at room temperature just for 10, 15 minutes to stop that cooking process so it doesn't overcook. And then you can wrap it in foil, put it in an esky if you wanna really get some good heat out of it, wrap a towel around it as well and that'll really insulate it and it'll stay hot for about six plus hours. Or another trick I've learned is you can actually hold it in the oven overnight, at about 150 Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius, and you can serve it the following day and that'll just hold it at a really nice serving temperature overnight or until when you wanna serve it. So once we've got the brisket out of that tray, I'm gonna save that rendered beef fat and I'm gonna freeze it. You can use that for your future brisket cooks. If you've got a lean brisket or you're just doing a brisket flat, all of that rendered beef fat is perfect to add into your brisket when you've wrapped it. It's gonna add moisture, it's gonna add flavor, and it's just gonna improve your brisket, especially if you've got a cheap, lean one. So we'll get this brisket out, get it at room temperature. We'll come back when we slice and serve it. And another thing you wanna do is just shut your vents down on your offset so you can kill that fire and you don't have to worry about it anymore. All right, now it's time to slice this thing. It's had a nice little rest. We've saved that rendered beef fat. Let's slice this open. Look at the bark on it. Look at the jiggle. This is gonna be good. I just know it. Slice it in the middle. Oh my God. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Have a look at that. Unbelievable. Look at that. Seriously. Holds up under its own weight. Pulls apart. Oh man. I think that's one of the best briskets. There's no words to describe that. Everything you want in a brisket, that bark, that rub is incredible. Juicy, tender, oh, the, like seriously. Doesn't get much juicier than that. That is incredible. And just look at that. Oh, I cannot get enough of this. It's safe to say that is now in my top three best briskets I've ever tasted. That is something else. So let's finish the process and I'll show you how I like to slice it. So you've got the flat side here, 
and the point end here. So I like to just slice the flat. Obviously you wanna stay across the grain at all times. Slice the flat until you get into the point and then I'll show you what I do once we get into the point. So that's how to smoke brisket in an offset smoker step by step. A great tutorial for beginners or if you've just picked up an offset smoker. I hope this video helps you. I'm gonna go get this inside. I'm probably gonna seal a lot of it up. Great for leftovers, great to chuck in the freezer. It reheats really well. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time.